In this video, we're going to look at a technique for calculating antiderivatives known as substitution. Here's the idea. Suppose we want to calculate this antiderivative, uh, a function whose derivative is 3x plus 1 raised to the 4. So we could calculate this in the following way. We could expand this out algebraically, uh, distributing 3x plus 1 times 3x plus 1, and then multiply that by 3x plus 1 again, and then multiply that by 3x plus 1 again, and get a long polynomial. If we expand it out as a polynomial, then we'll be able to find the antiderivative. But that's the hard way to solve this problem. An easier way is to introduce a new variable to represent the quantity inside parentheses here. I'm going to let s represent 3x plus 1. That's this stuff here. So then my integral becomes s to the 4th. But I also have to change this dx at the end of the integral. The dx at the end is an, what we call a differential. And I have to figure out what the correct differential is when I change from the variable x to the variable s. So to do that, let's calculate the differential. Uh, ds over dx is 3, because that's the derivative of this function, treating x as the variable. And then isolating the ds gives you 3dx. Let's actually isolate the dx and write it as 1 3rd dx. So we're using that information in our substitution. We've already replaced the 3x plus 1 with s. Now let's replace the dx with 1 3rd like this. Uh, now this coefficient 1 3rd, I could pull that out front. And now I need to find the antiderivative of s to the 4th ds. Well, that's going to be s to the 5th divided by 5 plus c. Remember, we always have a constant of integration at the end. And then uh, I can combine the coefficients of 1 3rd and the 5 in the denominator here to make that 1 over 15. And instead of s to the 5th, I want to rewrite things back in terms of my original variable. So instead of s, I have 3x plus 1. And that's raised to the 5th. And this is my general antiderivative. Now, if you wanted to check our answer, we could check by using the chain rule. If you take the derivative of this using the chain rule, you're going to end up with exactly the expression we started with, 3x plus 1 quantity raised to the fourth power. Before we move on, let's summarize what we did here. We introduced a new variable, in this case we use the letter s, to represent some part of the original expression. When we change our expression to write it in terms of that variable s, we also have to figure out how to write the differential in terms of the differential for the new variable. So we have to substitute both the new variable for the old expression and a new differential for the old differential. But you don't just replace the dx with a ds. You have to use the relationship between s and x to figure out what the relationship is between the differentials. So let's explore this with another example. Let's try finding the antiderivative of 4x times x squared plus 1 cubed dx. So again, I'm going to make a substitution. And off to the side, I'm going to make a note of what that substitution is. Let's use another variable. This time I'm going to use a t uh, to represent the x squared plus 1. Now, why am I choosing that? Well, it's part of the most complicated uh, component of this function, the x squared plus 1 inside these parentheses. And when I take the derivative of this expression, I see a multiple of x, and because there's also a multiple of x in my integral, that's a hint to me that I'm probably going to be able to simplify when I substitute for the differential. Let's see how that works out. Um, so I could isolate the dx here, 
and now use all of this to make my substitution. So we have the integral of 4x. Instead of x squared plus 1, I can write t, so that's t cubed. And instead of dx, I can write dt over 2x. And now you can see what I was talking about a moment ago. This 2x and this 4x can cancel out and simplify, leaving you with just a 2. And now we have to compute the antiderivative of 2t cubed dt. And that's easier. So I leave the coefficient 2 there. I take the antiderivative of t cubed, which is t to the fourth divided by 4. Don't forget our constant of integration plus c. We can simplify a little bit. I have 2 times t to the fourth over 4. Let's combine the 2 and the 4 in the denominator. That's 2 over 4, or 1 half, times t to the fourth. And instead of t, let's write the original variable x squared plus 1. Here we have our answer. This is the general antiderivative of the function we started with. And again, if you wanted to check our answer, you could calculate the derivative of this to see if it matches the function we started with, and it will. And if you calculated the derivative, you would do so using the chain rule. Notice that's the same rule we had to use last time, and there's a reason for that. It's because substitution is really the chain rule in reverse. All right, let's look at one more example. Let's find an antiderivative of x squared times the square root of x cubed plus 2 dx. How could we simplify this integral with a substitution? Well, we could try by replacing the argument inside the square root with a new variable. Let's use a u this time to represent the quantity x cubed plus 2. And calculate the differential. du dx is 3x squared. Uh, so du over 3x squared equals dx, and that's how we will replace the differential as we make our substitution in the integral. So I have an x squared, which I'll leave alone for the moment. I have a square root of x cubed plus 2, but x cubed plus 2 is written in shorthand with the symbol u. And then my old differential dx can be written in terms of the new differential du as du over 3x squared. Again, we're lucky. There's a little bit of canceling that occurs. This x squared in the denominator cancels with the x squared we began with. And all in all, we have the integral of 1 third times the square root of u. Um, in order to make it easier to see how we're going to anti-differentiate the square root of u, let's write that as u to the 1 half. And so now we see it's a power function, and therefore we can compute the antiderivative by reversing the power rule. Remember, you add 1 to the exponent, so you get u to the 3 halves, and you divide by the new exponent, which is 3 halves. Don't forget your plus c constant of integration. And then let's clean this up. Uh, I have one third times something over three halves. So dividing by three halves is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal two thirds. One third times two thirds is two ninths. And then instead of u to the three halves, we'll go back to writing things in terms of our original variable. So replace the u with x cubed plus two. And that's our general antiderivative, which again, we could check by calculating the derivative of this using the chain rule. And if we do, we'll see we get exactly what we started with.